up there with moose and beavers as symbols of Canada. They're even on our toonie. So you'd think, just based on how much we see them in the media, that we know an awful lot about them. The truth is, scientists don't know near as much about polar bears as we would like to, especially in the face of a rapidly changing Arctic. So what do we know? Well, let's start big. We know that polar bears rely on sea ice for many aspects related to their survival. They need sea ice, sea ice to gain access to their preferred prey, ringed seals and bearded seals. And because they have to travel across vast expanses of sea ice to find those seals, polar bears are widespread, which also means that the males must travel far and wide across the ice to find, court, and hopefully mate with the ever evasive female, allowing for reproduction. But they also need sea ice to get off the ice. Sea ice is highly variable, with much of it going through annual cycles of presence and absence brought on by the seasons. And during the summer months, as sea ice begins to melt, polar bears must travel across the ice as it's breaking up to come onto land, where they're forced to fast until the ice freezes up again and they can access seals again. The trouble is, with recent climate warming trends, sea ice is actually breaking up sooner and freezing up later each year, steadily increasing a polar bear's fasting period. With this in mind, although we do know that polar bears need sea ice, we know next to nothing about how sea ice dynamics might affect a polar bear's ability to move throughout their habitat, something that's really important for them. My thesis aims to describe ever-changing polar bear habitat in terms of sea ice habitat fragmentation, like the fragmented ice you see here, and habitat connectivity, using 12 years of sea ice satellite imagery to quantify then categorize sea ice cover based on polar bear habitat preference, where more fragmented ice is lower quality habitat, assuming that polar bears will experience more resistance moving through open water than they, than they would moving over ice. Then I'll overlay 12 years of movement data from GPS collared bears onto that sea ice analysis to see how their movement changes over sea ice as it becomes more or less fragmented in different seasons and different years. Knowing all of this will not only help further our much needed general understanding of polar bears, but will also help inform future conservation decisions as climate change continues to change and degrade polar bear habitat. Hopefully, this will allow us to keep polar bears as a symbol of Canada for decades to come. Thank you.